was literally crying. Like, I was crying. Like, I was like, oh my God. I was like, I don't like it. <laughs> Welcome back to another video. Y'all, it's been so long. Oh my God, I miss y'all. So, yeah, girl, if you are not new here and you know, you know the tea, a homegirl got a new booty. And I've just been recovering, trying to get myself together, compressing, staying at home, getting right. And I know y'all miss me. I miss y'all so much. I miss creating content. I should have had pre recorded videos. But I've been vlogging my, you know, recovery. But at the same time, honestly, I'm not doing a damn. Like, I'm not doing anything but watching movies in the house, like, going to my massages and going home, period. Like, nobody's seeing me. But, yeah, so if you're new here, hey, girl, my name is Kyra. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. So let's just hop right into it because I miss y'all. So we just going to get into the video. So today I'm going to be doing a BBL q and I'm currently... Well, I'm almost going to hit four weeks this week, Thursday on the 11th. And y'all have been having, asking me a lot of questions. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to film a BBL Q&A. And I'm also new to this. Like, I'm so happy. Like, I met a massage lady um, here in Chicago. Well, not here in Chicago. But um, in Chicago, she has really been um, educating me on the whole, like, BBL process, compressing, all that, making sure my body is contoured the way I need it to be, um, in order to like my results and fall in love with my body, you know? So, I'm just so grateful that she has helped me along the way. And, yeah, so I'm still learning and everything, too. I don't have all the answers. I'm just gonna let you know that right now. I don't have all the answers, but I'm going with what I know. So yeah, but before we even hop into the BBL q and I'm gonna talk about this face mask I've been using because, y'all, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I haven't been in the mood for nothing. I haven't... Sometimes that first week, I wasn't even in the mood to take a shower. Like, um, yeah, because you're dirty. I was just like, ugh, like, I'm so, like, I'm over it. Like, I was over it. Like, I was just... Didn't have any... any Energy. I didn't have no energy. I literally was letting myself go. I wasn't doing my hair. I was not doing my skincare. I ended up getting on my period. I was breaking out and I always end up breaking out during my period. So I was breaking out like ugh, along right here on my like around my mouth as you can see is some marks or whatever as you can see there's no bumps because i've been using this face mask and y'all know i love skincare i do not play when it comes to my skincare because i was just like you know what i need to get back on my grind i need to detox my face so i've been using the tea the Timmy detox mask green tea blend matcha lemongrass and clay when they reached out to me and wanted to work with me i was looking at the ingredients in the face mask because i don't just put anything on my face so i need to look at the ingredients it contains the lemongrass which is a good um anti-inflammatory which is going to um make sure like if you have like an acne flare-up it's going to calm your skin down clean out your pores and this has been doing the job for me so yeah i'm just gonna apply this face mask while i answer the questions because girl why not you know because I want this to be, I can't, I can't sit down. Um, I have to be real chill. You know? So I really want this to be like a real chill, relaxed video or whatever. And I'm um, kneeling on this little square cube thing because I don't like laying down all day. I get up and walk around, but obviously I can't even sit. <laughs> I'm not sitting for three months. Like I'm not sitting. I know some girls are able to sit. Well, they'll sit, they'll sit after six weeks, but I'm not doing that. Uh-uh, no. I'm not putting no pressure on my butt. So, I'm gonna apply the face mask so we can hop right into the video. This is the mask, and this smells like lemon. And it's also cruelty-free. And all the ingredients in here are 100% clean, so it's not gonna harm your skin. It's basically just gonna benefit your skin, honestly. And that's what I look for in a face mask because I can't be, you know... Just be putting anything on my face that's not gonna benefit me you know and i've been using it quite a bit so and i put this on real thick real thick you know like me Aha! no tea tea baby tea 
Yeah, y'all, I just cannot believe I was literally letting my skin go. I was like, oh, no. I need to bounce my skin back, period. So, I'm happy I have this. And when I take this mask off, y'all are going to see how soft my skin looks, how glowy it looks, like, literally just from the face mask. Like, no. And nothing else. <laughs> Yoga! <laughs> so okay so now that the mask is on and sitting um so while this dries y'all look at my eyebrows like girl i cannot wait to get myself back together and then my eyelashes have been growing my nails look a mess ugh so anyway, I'm just going to hop right into the questions. And y'all ask so many questions. It's crazy. Like, so many. Like, I can't. Like, I just. It's so many. So I'm just going to go through the important ones. And yeah, so. Okay, so first question. What made you want a BBL? I basically wanted a BBL because I had really bad hip dips, y'all. Like, I had disrespectful. But anyway, I had really bad hip dips and it was just not cutting it for me. I just really wanted that full hip look to, for me to feel like an overall woman. You know what I'm saying? I wanted that Coke bottle shape. It wasn't to get no nigga. It wasn't to look like all the Instagram girls. Like, I don't know why people say that, but I got this surgery for me. And this is what I wanted to do as a woman for me, to make me feel more confident and more like, you know, of a woman so that's why i got it and girl if you want to go get surgery go get surgery like it's 2020 like fuck all that other shit go get your surgery do what you want to do i don't care what no nobody gotta say about me i don't care that's why i'm so open with what i'm doing because i really don't care about what people have to say so and if i did i wouldn't be doing youtube i wouldn't be doing anything i would literally hold myself back from a lot of things if i gave a fuck about what somebody said about me you know what i'm saying so do what you want to do period like period 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 do what you want to do for you okay and nobody else because that's period next question did the anesthesia make you nauseous when you woke up no surprisingly i did not throw up the um rns that were taking care of me they thought i was gonna throw up because when um they came back to our hotel they were telling my mom like precautions she might throw up boo, boo, boo. but i did not throw up when i woke up from the anesthesia girl let me tell you how cold i was i was literally shivering i was like <laughs> <laughs> like i literally could not stop myself from shivering i was just like what is going on and <laughs> and like you're in this room full of other girls that already had their surgery so there was a girl next to me and she was just like uh like i didn't have my contacts on i didn't see nothing i was literally blurry but i know that girl was looking at me looking crazy girl and when i woke up i was like call my mama call my mama and i was like <laughs> literally my lip was literally shaking like like that like girl it was the craziest feeling ever like i could not stop shaking like i was so cold and then the nurse ended up putting like a little warm blanket on me and she was like it's normal you'll be fine well woo -woo. i still said call my mama like i was just like what is but I, the reason I said I wanted to call my mom because I knew she was worried about me because, girl, she's crazy. And, yeah, so I did not wake up. That was what had happened to me when I first woke up out of the anesthesia, though. Um, recovery house or hotel, which is best? Honestly, personally, I would choose um, a hotel or... I don't, I don't even want to fuck with Airbnbs. Like, if you watched my BBL video, you would know, like, too much going on. But I just personally do not want to recover with other girls around me that already had surgery moaning and in pain. Like, that would really annoy me. And these days, right now, while, while I'm recovering, I get easily annoyed. Like, I'm easily annoyed. I'm frustrated. I'm uncomfortable. Don't fuck with me. Don't, <laughs> don't mess with me. So, I just don't like the fact that other girls would be around me recovering. I was like, girl, like and then like us sharing a room and then like i don't like the idea of somebody else taking care of me like and 
Also, the recovery houses, I don't know, them food, the food be looking nasty, like lunch food or something in high school. I'm just like, ugh, like I'm not eating that. I would like literally starve in a recovery house. Like, so I want one, but I'm so scared of the pain. How bad does it hurt? One to 10, LOL. Honestly, it did not hurt. Like I was in, um, I feel like it was more soreness than pain because I'm really, I have a real high pain tolerance. So I feel like it wasn't pain it was mainly soreness like like you just went to the gym i know people be like oh my god it feels like i just got hit by a bus or oh my god i'm gonna die but everybody is different but for me it didn't feel like that i just felt like um it, it wasn't a lot of pain for me so i took it like a g every every time um my nurses um uh, came and got me from my um appointment like she was telling me like you could tell who's really takes care of their body like who's more healthy and who um is not, not healthy just how you recover so i would really highly suggest you put drink green smoothies eat take your vitamins like i was literally on point because you know i had covid so i was trying to get my body to recover from that so i could get the surgery because i was like girl we getting this surgery like you waited too long we we gotta do this i worked out a little bit i wasn't doing too much because i didn't want to lose weight i wanted to just you know sweat to get you know the virus out of me or whatever i had to do so yeah make sure you're taking care of your body before surgery um so you won't have um uh like you'll be able to deal with the pain that's what i should say what's um, the first outfit you gonna wear to show off your new body yaddy honey <laughs> You got the wait and see. Go make sure you follow me on Instagram. One has a low pain tolerance and wants a BBL. You think I can handle recovery? I think you can if you take care of your body well, like I just said. What was the worst part of the whole experience? The worst part of this whole thing is honestly probably the massages. Honestly, even though you're supposed to get them, I was literally dreading them. I was like, oh, I gotta get the massage. But I was literally taking it like a G because I really wanted that fluid to get out of my body and every time i went my masseuse was like you're so strong you're so strong because i think people i seen a girl get her massages and she was literally crouched over like uh, uh. but i was literally like come on let's do this like i was literally looking up and before my massages i made sure i ate something and i was hydrated because fluid is leaving your body so you're blood pressure is gonna drop that's what makes people faint so like i wasn't looking i was just looking up like uh like it was just it's it's like a weird feeling like because <laughs> your stomach is just feels numb and sore and it's just somebody just pressing on you and it's just it's just annoying but probably the massages honestly and probably sleeping because i cannot sleep like i've been losing sleep y'all like what what some advice you would give that no one really talks about after getting a bbl something that people never talk about i feel like is that once you get off that table and you start in your stage one faha don't rush the faha process and i feel like a lot of girls be in a rush to get in that stage two faha like my stage two faha just came this week and i invested um well, this one I have on was gifted to me, but it's still custom. And the other one that's coming was over $200. And it's still custom. And I still just wanted to um, wait it out with the stage one Faha. I wasn't in a rush to like go to a store in Miami and get a Faha just so I can start seeing my shape right away. No, I wanted my body to heal on its own. Like I didn't want to rush the process. Um because honestly my body was still in shock this is like a major surgery so i wanted to take my time and don't compare your results to somebody else and don't look in the mirror because i was looking in the mirror i was like oh my god like, mm -mm. like it's a journey that's why they say bbl journey because you're not gonna see you're not gonna see your shape right away because you're gonna be in your stage one faha and your stage one faha doesn't really compress you um so that's why when I got back home, I just took my stage one faha to the um, alterations lady and she took it in for me three inches. But I literally stuffed my faha so I could compress real good and it's, it's paying off. So 
one thing I would just say is just don't compare your results. Don't rush the process. Um, and don't rush the Faha. Don't try and rush into like a stage two Faha. Like, relax. You, you'll get there. Um, who is your doctor? So my doctor is was Dr. Williams at 305 Plastic Surgery. And, um... Yeah, 305 plastic surgery. And the reason I chose him is because he is a he specializes in hips and honestly I wanted hips. And I already knew I was gonna walk out with a butt um because I already had a little something back there. So all he had to do was add more volume to it and it just bound. I wanted shape because some doctors just put ass and then a, your tour and then just sit liposuction you out and they don't give you a shape and cause it an OG line. So it's just like that curve you have in between your torso and your hips so you can look like a Coke bottle. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I wanted and that's why I chose him. And it's crazy because, um, wait. <laughs> and it's crazy because they had reached out to me and they told me that was going like wanted to work with me and i was like oh okay and that's cool because i'm looking at the doctor at your facility bay let's get it let's go so and that was like the beginning of um no that was like the end of 2019 because i wasn't i wasn't really for real but then i was just like you know what let's do it and that was when i made the decision in march to go ahead with the process i was falling in love with his results when i was looking at um the girls on the page so i was like okay i'm gonna just go with him and they want to work with me anyway so let's get it <laughs> let's get it let's get it and now my, that my doctor wasn't even popular back then he was not popular this man is booked until 2022 so that's crazy that's crazy <laughs> But make sure you do your research on the doctor that you want. Just because I went to Dr. Williams don't mean that you should go to Dr. Williams. Um, do your research at the Facebook group. See what the girls is talking about because you really want to get all the information you need before you choose a doctor. How are you feeling? I'm feeling fine. Like, I'm doing good, you know. Did you remain awake during surgery? No, girl. I was knocked out. I don't know. I don't know why people will want. I think it's cheaper, I guess, um, to not go under the anesthesia. But I don't know who would want to be half awake during that surgery. Like, I think I've seen Tokyo Styles post his um, BBL on his um, Instagram. And he was awake. I'm like no like put me to sleep i do not want to see that my surgery was literally in like a second he literally put whatever he needed to in the iv i was out like a like period put me to sleep i don't want to see that mm -mm. how was the pain afterwards how was the plane ride home so basically y'all know the covid um a lot of people aren't at the airport so my plane the plane wasn't even packed so good thing me and my mom sat in the back it was um we were the two people in our row and then the um row across from us nobody was there so i'm like hey i'm gonna just sit on my bbl pillow for takeoff and then i was holding the um seats um before me so because like on a bbl pillow you really just in the air and like it's uncomfortable to sit back so i'm just like was holding on to the seat in front of me so once i was able to get up i just went over to the row across from us when nobody was over there and i sat doggy style period like i was not playing i fell asleep and it wasn't even that long i fell asleep woke up and it was time to go well i had to get back in the bbl pillow but yeah it wasn't that bad but i feel like if i had arrived the bbl pillow the whole way i would have been irritated total with airbnbs massages nurses flight and the surgery how much did it cost so the airbnb that i originally got was three thousand dollars three thousand dollars to be in the hood and <laughs> And then, um, obviously, we couldn't stay there, and I couldn't get my money back right away. So, um, I had a pay to move to another um, uh, hotel, and then um, I had to pay for my massages. My massages was like four hundred dollars. 
um and then the nurses um they have packages on their website but and i also tip them really good because um some of the stuff they was doing they didn't have to do flight um, i had to pay for me and my mama so i don't know how much that was because she booked it um and the surgery um my surgeon costs i think he's ten thousand dollars now but i'm not even gonna flex with y'all i'm working with them i worked with them i don't know why some of these um influencers be like they won't tell you they worked with the doctor but obviously you are working with the doctor because you're making a post <laughs> nobody was born yesterday sweetie but yeah so i was i did not pay ten thousand dollars for my surgery and off it was like a little fee <clears throat> Yeah, it was like a little fee. It wasn't nothing major. So with that, three, four, five, six, seven, five hundred. So yeah, it was around roughly eight thousand dollars. Eight thousand dollars. <laughs> so yeah so so yeah make sure y'all are financially able because you never know what's gonna happen like the airbnb situation like just make sure you're financially able to you know be able to and then obviously like food and like groceries and stuff is like minor but still just prepare for the worst you never know what's gonna happen so make sure you're financially able to you know have, but if you feel like you're not gonna run into any complications you should be fine but um you just never know so make sure you're just financially like prepared to um get the surgery because you just never know did the doctor give you exactly what you wanted so and then also there's another question in here um what picture did i use for my wish pick um, first of all, my doctor, he does not do wish picks. I showed, the first time I seen him was in March before the pandemic. Because I really was supposed to get my surgery in April. Hold the fuck up. Oh, all this fucking talking. My shit like this is hair desert out here. But, um, and also I'm compressing right now. So it's a little hard to talk. Because you know, this shit's tight. But, um yeah my doctor he does not do wish pit does not do that vixen look um but i feel like i already had like a good foundation so he gave me the look that i wanted um but no when i try to show him my wish pick um he was like no i don't do that so i just had to show him one of his work one of his work that he did on a girl i loved how her hips looked and i showed him the girl and i was just like i want my hips emphasized and so I got naked in front of him or whatever. And he was like, okay, I'm going to give you as much hips as possible. And then I'm just going to put more volume in your booty, period. I was like, okay, cool. <clears throat> he never said he couldn't do what I asked him to. So, um, and I was already comfortable with him. I trusted him to give me like a good shape or whatever. So he did do what I wanted to do. But in the beginning, I was, I was a little iffy. But because it was just like when i first came out of surgery it was just ass and i was like where's my shape where's the shape i was looking for where's my og line and it developed over time but so like i was saying you can't really rush the process it's really a journey like for real recovery time so they say um it takes like four for like if people like go back to work it usually i guess you can go back in like three weeks but i was not having that and i told him i'm not going back for like a month so, because I'm not going to be walking around, waking up early, putting my body through stress, and just, no. So, six months to a year. Um, and then I can sit on my butt um, at month three. Um, but at six weeks, it's okay to sit down on something soft, but not for a long period of time. But I'm still not going to sit on my butt because I do not want to lose my volume. I just don't want to mess with it. And I'm going to be mad. Because I'm not... I, girl, this process was not easy. So I'm not going letting it go to waste. Did you have to lose or gain weight before your procedure? BTW, love you. Love you too. And I just gained weight during the quarantine because honestly, I was supposed to be my surgery back in april and then quarantine happened and i was like you know what forget it i'm gonna just gain some weight gain a little bit more weight so i can have more volume so yeah he never told me i had to gain or lose so i just did that on my own um 
But when I went to him the first time, he was like, you don't have a lot of fat. Like, he said that. So I'm like, Shh, let me pack on this little, little weight. Are you happy with your results? Miss you, baby. I miss you, too. And, okay, let me keep it way 100 with y'all. Like, 100%. I did not like my results at first. Like, when I came home that first week, I was literally crying. Like, I was crying. Like, I was like, oh, my God. I was like, I don't like it. I was like, oh, my God. Because it was literally just ass. And then, like, I was like, where's my hips? Where's my shape? And my waist wasn't in yet because, obviously, I was in my stage one five high. So, and I, and I didn't have my phones and stuff in because I wasn't... Like, my masseuse in um, Miami, she was put, telling me to put the foams in or whatever. And the RN girls. But the masseuse here in Chicago, she really helped me a lot. She was like, girl, you good. You look good. And she was telling me, like, how to really compress in my faja, my stage one. Because she was like, oh, my God, that's too loose. You need to get that tight in. You need to put these many foams in. Boom, boom, boom. And I was like bit and i she i took what she said to me and i did that shit asap so then my weight started to go in and then my hips started to spread and it was just it's, it's getting there baby like currently i'm 45 inches on my hips and i'm 28 on my waist so and i'm gonna show y'all my um butt at the end with my phones and everything on so you'll see how wide my hips are even with the foams and everything and it's it's amazing but yeah at first i did i was crying i was like oh my god where's the shame <laughs> so yeah don't get discouraged this is really a mental game it, it will really mess with your head so did the doctor advise working out before surgery or is that the choice of yours um no he didn't even tell me to work out but he says on his uh page keep working out until um the day of your surgery like um if you are if you do regularly work out but i chose to do that on my own just so my lungs were ready to you know um go under the anesthesia and you know my body was gonna be in shock so i really wanted to prepare myself and just just be try to be overall healthy so i did that on my own and like i said i was trying to sweat out the covid so um yeah so um who did you go to to your massages in miami i went to um the squeeze lady coriato she's in my bbl um video i put her instagram on the screen how do you feel having a bigger but sometimes i really hate the attention um it i don't know i haven't got any reactions yet because i've been in the house um, but I just feel like I didn't do this for attention. I did this for me. Um, cause I don't even like attention. I don't like when people stare at me. I don't like it. I just be uncomfortable. I'm like, oh, what you looking at? But, um, and it feels normal. It just feels good to have hips and just put on my clothes and just it fit how I want to fit. Like, it's just full where I needed to be full. Like, I just love it. Like, I tried on my skims the other day. Girl, let me tell you. I was, I could not, because I had um, got out the shower and my faja was washing. And I'm only out of my faja for an hour. So, um, I tried on my skims and, girl, <laughs> hips, baby. Waist of wear. Like, <laughs> I cannot, oh, shit. I cannot wait to show y'all. I cannot wait to show y'all um what it looks like in clothes because it just looks so good i damn near wanted to cry i was like oh my god i can't believe i look like this i was just like i can't believe i look like this like it's crazy like i loved my body before don't get me wrong but girl <laughs> get your nigga out. no just kidding <laughs> i'm playing i'm playing jeez <laughs> do you have to eat certain foods so okay so i try to eat healthy fats um right after surgery they say to feed the fat so you want to eat like fish avocado eggs protein bacon like turkey bacon stuff like that stuff high in protein but 
you don't want to diet. Like, honestly, um, after surgery, um, your metabolism is gonna work, girl. It's it's fast at this point because your body, I don't know what it is, I don't know how, but your metabolism is fast. Cause girl, I be going to the bathroom every hour after I eat. I'm yeah, I'm on the toilet. Like, don't try and diet. Um, so yeah, I don't eat. Like, right now, I'm not on a diet because I just want to feed my fat and stuff like that. But I don't eat, like, a lot of carbs. Um, just try to eat healthy fats and, like, a lot of eggs, protein, salmon, stuff like that. Um, and I also get B12 shots. I don't know why some girl, I don't know why people don't talk about this. But I have not seen anybody get a B12 shot um, in any BBL except for me. Um, because I knew about B12 shots. I was getting B12 shots before. And um, I don't know if you watched my BBL video. But um, Aaliyah explained one of the RN nurses. She was saying how the BBL um, B12 shot preserves the fat in your butt so i got that right after surgery and i do get that shot once a week in my arm but yeah so i just get a b12 shot once a week so you can preserve the fat which pain medicine did you take and did it help so i was not my mom did not want me taking percocets because she thought i was gonna get addicted to it i don't know how people get addicted to percocets but i guess the feeling but me personally i was just not but um i end up taking a percocet for the first two days um because the nurses they were like no she needs to take a percocet because her body's in shock she's gonna be in pain so just let her take it so i took two the first night and then one um the second day and then after that i really wasn't in pain so i really didn't need to take any pain meds um like i said i would literally prepare myself for this um i only took a pain med like two days and that was it and then um i was just taking my antibiotics until the days were out so but you can use tylenol extra strength or um they say to take a tylenol before you go to your massages but i didn't i just ate something and yeah like i said y'all i was holding down like a g like i was i was getting through it okay like it because it's not really pain it's just sore you know so ask me about my arm lipo um <clears throat> for you to get um results in your arm lipo you need to stay compressed like look how small my arm looks <laughs> but um you need to compress um as you can see it's still swollen right here it's very very tight so, um, the arm lipo you just want to stay compressed i know it's irritating at first um, because it's so tight, you just don't want to sleep in it. You don't. You just want to take it off. You want your arms to breathe. But I swear to you, if you find a good masseuse and um, are compressing really good, girl, you're going to get the results that you want. And you start to get used to it. I'm starting to get used to wearing my arm compression now. So it doesn't bother me anymore. But it really did bother me in the beginning. I was just like, oh my god, this is annoying. How long did it take for you to move good without much pain? Um, the second, uh, the second day I got up and was moving, the girls was like, oh my God, you up and moving. But the pain really, it wasn't really pain, but on the third day, the week of surgery, like after I got it, like I was so weak. Like, I think my blood pressure went so low. I was literally getting, my lips was literally purple. I was just like, <clears throat> I was just not in the mood to do anything i was just real weak i was just ugh. i was just not feeling it and yeah but i really didn't have that much pain it was just me not having energy like i was just not in the mood to do anything like i was just not in it to win it um would you do it do it again or any recommend it re or recommend it um if you want to do it go for it um it's not an easy process um <laughs> it's so annoying but i don't know if i would do i don't know right now i don't want to do this again i don't know how people do this back to back but you never know i might get kids or something and you know i might you know want a lipo like mommy make over me okay but um i don't want no kids that <laughs> but i'm just saying you never know i might meet somebody now guys <laughs> 
did you have that why what the fuck did I just do moment during your surgery um somebody else said um did you have like a um a breakdown moment um I really didn't I was just in shock that I was just like oh my god I actually did it like I actually got the surgery because I was really I ain't gonna lie I was so nervous I was so nervous y'all especially at pre-op Pre-op, I was so nervous. Um, how do you respond to negative comments about your BBL? Um, I feel like I don't really get negative comments. I mean, people be like, oh, why did you do that? You already had a good body, woo-woo. But it's not about them. It's about me. I just ignore whatever people have to say. I mean, you, you're... I mean... Ugh. People are entitled to have an opinion, but an opinion I don't really don't give a fuck about. So... It is what it is. I don't care what anybody got to say about me if you want to go. But I really don't care about what people say. I really ignore the comments. I mean, I don't, I don't look at them. But I really just ignore that shit. Because we don't need all that negative energy, sweetie. Okay. When is your body reveal? I'm probably going to do a body reveal Um, probably next week. Um, with no foams or nothing on, I'm gonna still have my fire on, but obviously, I can't really do no shots on here on the internet. But I'm gonna make sure that you see the shape and everything and all that. But at the end of this, I'm gonna show y'all what my butt looks like and my hips and stuff like that with the foams and stuff on. Is your confidence higher? I feel like I'm not going to feel my confidence until I get dressed, until I get my hair done, until, you know, I get like a full face beat. I feel like I'm not going to feel it until, you know, I'm feeling myself. You know what I'm saying? So, it hasn't hit yet. I'm still a little, I'm still going to be humble. And, but, you know, I'm going to just gonna walk a little different. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to walk in the room a little different. Were you so. nervous that you were actually getting it done? So, okay. So, the day of, the day before surgery was pre-op, that was the day I was really nervous. Like, I was just so, like, I'm like, oh my God, I can't do this. And then when they gave me that packet, like, it was a, it was a book. Like, I had to fill it out and... I was like, oh my God, I'm signing my life away. Like, what if I don't get up? I was like, what if I don't get up? Like, what if I don't wake up? Because I was really nervous because, you know, I had COVID. And, you know, if you did not know, COVID is in your lungs. That's why people with asthma and stuff, they can't get through it because it's, it's mucus built up in their lungs. So I was a little nervous because I had it. And then I was just like, oh, is my, is my body going to be able to get me through the anesthesia? It's going to wake me up. Like, I was just going through so many emotions. And then all this stuff that was happening, like the Airbnb, nothing was turning out right. So I'm like, oh my God, am I supposed to be doing this right now? A of surgery, I actually wasn't nervous at all. But I had to keep it together. I literally was crying. <laughs> I was crying the night before. Like, I didn't even tell my mom. I was just crying. Like, and I had my glasses on. And I was just like, oh my God. Like, I was just so emotional. Like, I was just so emotional. And then, um, but the day I had surgery, I was not, I was just like, I need to keep it together because I don't want her to be worried about me. Um, because she can't come in because, you know, it was COVID. So, I just had to be strong. And when I got to my surgery, um, I didn't, really didn't have no time to think about the surgery. I was just like, um, I don't know how many CCs he's, he's, he used. I don't know how much fat he took, but... Girl, he sucked my stomach dry. When I first seen my stomach at uh post stop, girl, I was like, oh my god, I don't got a fupa. I was when I literally when she literally took the fire off of me, I looked down, I was like, it's so flat. Like he literally he sucks you dry. He don't leave nothing behind. My arm skinny, girl, and he put all that and my thighs and my booty so but yeah so um i'm gonna answer a few more questions because there's so many and if you have any more just leave them in the comments if i didn't answer any of the questions that you had um starting right now i use vitamin e oil um arnica um vitamin e oil cocoa butter and then um 
vitamin E cocoa butter. I'm also going to use the Ambi cream once the scabs peel off. I'm going to use the Ambi Fade cream to fade the dark marks. Oh, have you been getting your massages? What's using the bathroom like after surgery? Okay, so for your massages, I get, I recommend you get six before you leave Miami or wherever you're at. Um, if you're out of state. Um, and then when I got back home, I wanted to do 10 because they say I um, recommended 10. So I just booked 10 massages with my homegirl that's in Chicago. I love her. She's so good, y'all. She's so good. Uh, she's been doing so the magic on me. And when she seen me, like my results and stuff, she's like, oh my God, like you are compressing like crazy. She's like, you have the smoothest stomach I have seen in a while. I was like, really? And she was like, yes. And then she was like, you need to show them how you're compressing. So make sure you watch my vlog where I show y'all how I compress. Because, girl, um, that's how I was compressing in my stage one Faha. But at the end of this video, I'm going to show y'all how I compress in the stage two. But I did not show y'all how I stuff it. But it's really just the, the same. The two on the side and then the one in the front and then the ad board and then my backboard and then the Faha. So, but yeah, um, so I'm getting 10, um, I get three a week, one on Monday and then Thursday, Friday, cause it is in Chicago and I do have to commute. But after I get done with my 10 with her, I'm going to do like at least once a week, like for a good another six weeks. And then after that, like after that, I'll probably go like once a month and then I'll probably find somebody that does like specialize in like body contouring and stuff like that. So I don't look bloated and stuff like that. Um, the post-op care is so important, y'all. Y'all gotta, the post-op care is what is gonna make your body contour and shape and you're gonna see it all. You're gonna see your waist shrinking. When your waist shrinks, your hips go out and that's when you're really going to see your shape. So make sure you're really staying in your faja for 24 hours of the day. Like, I don't play no games over here. I'm not playing. So, because when I pop out, baby, I'm going to pop out. <laughs> so, and I'm not playing. Like, I'm literally not playing. So, yeah. Um, And the post-op massages for her... um. In Chicago, I got like 10, so I paid her $700. And like I said, um, getting a BBL is an investment. And then also post-op care are investments as well. So you got to invest your money in what you pay for. So don't ever um, think it's, oh my God, it's so expensive or whatever. Find a way to pay for that shit because you get one body and one body only. So make sure you take care of it. And yeah, so. answer are like, what do you really need for a BBL? And um, I feel like for me personally, all I really needed was my stage one Faha, which I got from the facility. Foams, ad board, compression socks, um, my arm compressions, um, Arnica gel for the bruising. I still have a little bit of bruising, but not that much. Um, just on my arms a little bit. But most of the bruising on my body is gone. Um, what else? The Arnica tea you do not need. Um, the urinal, you definitely need a urinal. Going to the bathroom for the first two weeks. No, the first week. Um, I depended on my mind to put the urinal right there and I just peed because I couldn't bend over. But now I just open up my file because it has like a slit and I just go over the toilet. But it's so annoying because sometimes my pee be going, it be going anywhere I wanted to go. Like, and it be getting like little drops on like the file, like on the zipper part where the opening is and it's annoying and girl but it's not that bad but you're definitely gonna need a urinal and then also what else do you need um pee pads like those doggy pads because you're gonna be leaking um antibacterial soap um what else did i use pedialyte beet juice um i drank a uh, girl i'm so tired of pedialyte <laughs> I do not want to see another Pedialyte, but I try to drink at least one a day. But I try to drink a lot of water because you want to get that fluid out of you naturally. My camera's dying. But you want to get that fluid out of you. If you, like, leave um, 
out of state and you still got a little bit of fluid um you can pee it out naturally and so you just want to keep being hydrated and so you don't get fibrosis or nothing like that so uh, i'm trying to figure out what else i gotta say because my camera's about to die you don't need diapers you don't need um half of that list you don't even need like for real so but anyway so i'm gonna wash this face mask off because it's about dry and um i'm gonna show y'all what it looks like after and i'm gonna charge my camera uh, so yeah i'm just gonna remove this mask and i'm gonna show y'all the the glow so yeah like i said if you have any more questions just dm me on instagram i'm real active i'm not shy i respond to people and then also if you want to leave a comment in the comment section i will definitely respond so yeah hey, girl so let me just wash this mask off because it's about time and i'm gonna come back in a second and show y'all what it's looking like okay y'all so i just washed off the mask and look how glowy my skin is like <laughs> i am telling you this mask mask has literally saved my skin so all the mask details will be in the description box below and like i said it really helps me detoxify my skin and like i said the main ingredient that i really really love in here is the lemongrass because it's an anti-inflammatory so it's going to really help clean out my pores and i did have the bumps and like was my skin was going through it it helped um reduce like the redness of the the redness of the pimple so it helped it go down and now it's gone and it's so smooth and yeah so make sure you check this mask out so yeah and also make sure you're drinking your water do not slack on your skincare and this mask you can use one to four times a week but i like to use um a mask twice a week because i don't want to over exfoliate my skin you know so and my skin is too sensitive for that but my skin can really handle this though because as you can see my face is in red it's calm smooth and glowy and that's what i want so yeah girl so i'm gonna show y'all my body right now i look a mess in this pre-recorded film in this pre-recorded clip but y'all are gonna see um what's behind there and what's you know in the front so yeah so yeah i'm just gonna roll that clip so this is what the front looks like imagine these board i have like three foams in here my ad board and then a binder so yeah but yeah it's it's there baby like what what it's okay period <laughs> but yeah so this is what i literally live in for 24 hours of the day i don't but anyways y'all thank y'all so much for tuning in like i said if you have any more questions leave them down below but anyway so thank y'all so much for watching this video i hope you guys enjoy it and do not forget to like comment and subscribe and i can't wait to pop out so we coming through with the looks okay we coming through with the vibes the body yaddy yaddy no i'm just kidding <laughs> But, um, yeah, y'all, I love y'all so much, and I will see y'all next video.